What's up there, Hana? It's Hot the Ad Winner. Welcome to English Meet Ad Winner. Today we're going to be doing our first video on Old English declensions, and we're going to start with the strong declensions, and those are the Wer, Yivu, Soch, Sheep, and Sharp uh, declensions. So, what do we mean when we say a strong declension? Well, strong was invented, the word strong was invented by the Brothers Grimm, and nowadays it's just the term that we use in Germanic languages, but it's pretty ambiguous, so we don't use it as much. But basically, what the Grimm's meant was that a strong stem shows more change and a weak stem shows less change. Unfortunately, they applied this same terminology to nouns and to verbs for two completely different phenomena, and that's why it's so ambiguous, and that's why people don't use them as much, at least for the nouns. Um, but anyway, a strong noun is where, where else? A strong verb is like quedon, quath, quadon, queden, uh, which is confusing. So I'm going to be calling weak nouns and nouns uh, to make things less confusing. I'm just going to use strong noun because that's the established terminology. It's easier. Um, so yeah, there's three types of strong because there are three genders. There's masculine, feminine, and neuter. We have three different conventions for each of these. This is similar to German. This is like Icelandic like Latin, like Sanskrit, and all these other Indo-European languages. I think of strong declensions as the default, similar to how in Mat similar to how in Latin you have the masculine us e declension, the feminine a uh, i declension, and the neuter um a uh, declension. And this is not a coincidence. Uh, in fact, the the Latin us a uh, and um uh, declensions are etymologically the same as these uh, declensions. So that's why, that's why they're kind of the default. It was already that way in Proto-Indo-European. So we're going to start off with masculine, uh, which is the where declension. This is the easiest one. There's no variance for stem length, which we'll get onto. It is the direct ancestor to the modern English declension with the s plural and s possessive. So, whenever you say something like um, stone, stones, um, you know, folk, folks etc, etc. That is the modern English descendant of this declension. It's the only one that really survived meaningfully into modern English. So, the singular, the nominative, is no ending, the genitive is s, the accusative is no ending, the dative is e. The plural is nominative os, genitive a, accusative os, and dative um. So, an example of this is where, which means man, so, where, whereas, where, where, whereas, where, whereas, whereum. So, so, where, and then there's another one. So, I'm going to ask you guys to decline this yourself. This is the word stan, which means stone. Um, so, try and decline it yourself. Don't look back at the notes. If you need to, just to, you know, look back at the endings. And that's fine, but I want you to flip back to this slide and try and climb stall on yourself. And I'll give you time, but I'll also let you pause the video. So I'm going to assume that you guys paused the video, but I gave you 10 seconds also, so let's just move on. If you need more time, you can just pause the video. The correct answer is in the singular, nominative stan, denative stanis, accusative stan, dative stane. Plural, nominative stanos, genitive stana, accusative stanos, and dative stanum. So that's the masculine declension. Uh, on to the feminine declension. This is the sorg declension, and this is the evil declension. So the nominative singular ends in either no ending or u, depending on stem length. Now this is very similar to Latin. Uh, in Latin, stem length determines stress, and it's mostly the exact same rules as here in Old English. So a long stem is a stem that has a long vowel or more than one consonant. So for example, the stem of sorg is, well, sorg, uh, which has two consonants, or the stem of dune is, uh, well, dune, which is a long vowel. So 
you have two consonants at the end or a long vowel, then it's a long stem. So a short stem has neither of these. So for example, the stem of yivu is yif, which has a short e and only one consonant, the f. So the endings for this are nominative u or nothing, genitive e, accusative e, and dative e. The plural is nominative a or e, genitive a, accusative a or e, or dative um. So the a plural nominative accusative is the older version, a is the newer one, and because I prefer early West Saxon, I use a. So let's look at our two example words. So we have sorg, which means sorrow, and so that is sorg, sorge, 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 sorga, 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 sorgum. And then yivu, which means gift, we have yivu, yive, 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 yiva, 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 yivum. So the stem of the word for love is luf, and it is declined like sor or yivu. So I'm going to ask you to decline it yourself. Again, pause the video. So the correct answer for this, because luf is a short stem, the correct answer is luvu, luve, 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 luva, 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 luvu. And yes, luvu is in fact used in the plural sometimes. For example, this uh, partial quotation, which I took from Basil Toller, for tham luvum thehi tohim hapbaf. So that's interesting. I'm not going to get into why it's used that way, but suffice to say, it is used that way. So next up, neuter. Again, length of the stem matters for this one because the nominative plural is either u or nothing. Uh, and this class kind of sort of survives. It doesn't really, it's not cohesive anymore, but it survives as you will as the tendency for some names of animals to have zero plurals, you know, like deer or sheep. These are original. And later on, we even extended this to words like fish and moose, uh, which fish was originally masculine and uh, was declined with wer, and moose is a loan word from a Native American language. So singular is nothing, genitive s, accusative nothing, dative e. Uh, plural is nominative nothing or u, genitive is a, accusative is nothing or u, and dative is um. So our example words are sheep, which means ship, and shop, which means sheep. I know, confusing, but sheep, sheepes, sheep, sheepe, sheepu, sheepa, sheepu, sheepum. Shop, shopes, shop, 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 shop. So daur, which means wild animal, is near strong. Decline it yourself. Mind the stem length. I'm going to let you pause the video. So the correct answer is daur, daures, daur, daure, daur, daura, daur, daurum. And if you noticed, I actually used the modern descendant of this word deor uh, in my little example. Deor becomes deer. So that was a little clue also. So last remarks. There are minor variants to these strong declensions, and I'll mention them whenever they come up. There's also the weak declensions and a few other minor declensions. Weak declensions, aka end declensions, are going to be getting their own video, and the minor declensions will all be put into one video. Uh, so. One last thing that you might have noticed from watching this, genitive plural always ends in a, dative plural always ends in um. And this is actually true across all declensions. This holds true no matter what noun. So even if you don't know exactly how to decline a noun, you at least know that um and a are a thing. So thank you for watching. This has been English Meet Aldwina. Um, please stay tuned for more videos.